Hey, good evening, folks. Canal here, Bulls on Wall Street. Hope everybody had a, a nice weekend. Uh, some crazy action in the markets last week after getting um, a nice little bounce off the 50-day moving average. What ended up happening was essentially a, a bull trap type setup. You know, as it looked like we were about to break down from our range, we got a nice bounce up right into resistance and then the floodgates opened. And Thursday and Friday, the markets really, really got sold off. And, you know, the action itself from even then was a considerably more bearish and much tougher to trade. This has been uh, a very tricky market to trade. You know, we have been in a distribution environment now really since the beginning of March. And that's made trading difficult for a lot of traders, you know, 99% of traders as uh, everything that you're doing in your playbook kind of gets flipped up, right? You buy strength and it gets faded and then you sell at the lows and things pop and vice versa, right? When you're shorting, those are ty the type of things that happen when you're stuck in kind of this distribution type market. Now we have had a bunch of really nasty down trend days where if you were biding your time, you know, you were in, you, you know, you had your psychological and ca capital really reserved then, you know, you could have really made some money. You know, less is more in this type of environment. You know, I really got to remind myself of that, you know, quite a bit because every day less is more, less is more because, you know, you, you get chopped up. And then what happens is when the market gives you its signal and you really start to start trending in a particular way, you've wasted so much of your emotional and psychological capital getting stuck in the chop that, you know, when you get these nice trending moments, you know, when you get these nice trending moments, um, you're just so beaten down that you can't catch them, right? And the same thing happens, right? You get chopped up a little bit. Then when you get a really, really nice trending moment, you're really beaten down and you can't catch them. And, you know, that's kind of what happened a little bit last week to me. You know, I kept uh, jumping the gun a little bit in the morning. And, you know, I would I would fake myself out, you know, on the 8th. It was like, you know, after we had these two nasty down days, right, I was really ready to go come uh, the beginning of the week. And we got a nice little uh, flush at the open. And I'm thinking, okay, all you know, here we go. And then, you know, you squeeze back to the other way. And, and that was happening a lot to me at the open. You know, I was psyching myself out, you know, in this type of market, you know, sitting back and waiting and, and getting a sense of the action is really really important you know i finished up a little bit for the week but nothing special um after having a you know really nice week the week before and pretty much all my losses all of this stuff that came aboard you know this was all from me just jumping the gun at the open you know getting really excited and then you know and then what i do is i spend the rest of the day you know once i was able to identify the trend of the day and what was going on then I was really able to capitalize. But as you can see, I wasn't really making any money on longs. And, you know, all my money was on the short side. But uh, even then, it could have been a lot better because I was jumping in um, right off the bat at the open. And, you know, that's just never, <clears throat> you know, a never good policy. So let's see what's going to happen for the next week. So <clears throat> we've, we've broken down this range here, right? We've broken down this range. And... and off first bat, you know, that seems like a nasty, nasty thing, right? You know, we've seen this in, you know, but the one thing that we have to really be aware of is that these type of opportunities in the past in the market, when we've had these kind of clear type of breakdowns and things of that nature, we've whipsawed back the other way. They've been traps. And so we have to be really careful and use a little bit of our imagination and extrapolate different scenarios that could potentially happen. And so that's what we really need to do. And so one of the things I always mention, you know, really look at is, well, <clears throat> where are our support levels? You know, what can really happen? Things look really, really nasty here, but on the overall picture, right, you know, we're really not that far off from highs. Our uptrend channels are, are, are still intact for the most part. And so, you know, we've got to remember to kind of play things both ways. You know, we've had a nice run here. For quite some time and you know we're kind of holding in our trend even though the market's been a little bit shaky you know we're still holding up in our trend for the most part now if these levels start to crack then obviously there are you know other things at play and we have to get very defensive 
But we got to remember also that we have some moving averages and the 200-day moving average also coming into play. So there's a few things that can happen. Short term, we're oversold. And, you know, we could get a slight bounce in this market, right? The nature of that bounce is going to tell us really what our next move is because we have conflicting signals right now. Sure, we're oversold and we pulled back quite a bit, so we should get a bounce. Now, if that bounce is weak, right? If that bounce is weak, then that's probably going to set up another type of uh, short term bear setup that's going to get sold off and then lower we can go. As the last couple of weeks, right, some of the bear flags and stocks and stuff actually have been playing out. Uh, now, on the other side of things, you know, if we open off, off the bat super weak this week, you know, one of the things that we've got to remember is that in the past, when we've ripped below uh, key moving averages, especially like the 50-day moving average and starting to get really oversold, they've been traps. They've been traps. And so we have to be aware of that. Now, does that mean that that's what's going to happen this time? No. In anything, right, if the pattern plays out so many times over and over, at some point, right, that that pattern is going to break. But we don't know when that's going to happen, right? All we can do is assign some probabilities and really remember to our levels. So <clears throat> if we start off really weak Monday, Tuesday, right, I do think that that'll set up a nice little potential snapback. The one thing that I'll be wary of is that even now that we're getting a little bit oversold and coming to some levels of support and things of that nature, you know, if we get a weak, weak bounce, right, you know, that could just sucker in more people. As so many people have been burnt in the last week, right, last few weeks, right, so many people have been burnt. Uh, I suspect that there's going to be all sorts of supply from people wanting to unload. So we've got to be able to play it both ways. Now, the NASDAQ looks much, much, uh, much trickier than, you know, much, much weaker than the S&P, right? We've essentially not been in a distribution market in the, uh, you know, in the NASDAQ. I mean, we've been really making lower lows and lower highs. You know, we've been breaking down here. Now, the NASDAQ itself is also, you know, on a, you know, a support level. And so that's something that, you know, we've got to respect here going back is that, you know, we've got some ranges that could hold, you know, in, in the NASDAQ, right? You know, so we got to watch, you know, kind of coming down to this level, you know, we'll see if that provides some type of support. And then we have, you know, of course, the 200-day moving average underneath. We haven't been able to test the 200-day moving average in, you know, well over a year. So, you know, that could be in the cards. Now, once again, we're starting to get some oversold readings, which don't matter when everybody in the market is, you know, cascading out of things. But those things do set up potential catalysts for uh, short-term bounces and things of that nature. And then what we have to do is really watch the nature of it. So that's going to be important. We've got a lot of distance from where we are to the 50-day moving average in the NASDAQ. So there is room to bounce. You know, if we start to kind of reverse off these levels, right, we've got some potential room and we've got multiple layers of support here to really do this. So it's nasty out there. Uh, we know that it, we felt it for a long time. But remember to not get too excited to just want to go and short everything. Because what we're finding is that, you know, a lot of the stocks that we've been riding down, right, we've been playing like this FEYE and the Splunks and some of these stocks, they've given up so much of their gains, right? If you think about FEYE, this big earnings gap that it had from the flat top breakout, you know, uh, we're almost filled on this thing. So, you know, how much lower is this thing really going to go? Well, of course, things can always go lower and lower, but a lot of the damage has already been done, right? A lot of the damage has already been done. You know, we love, you know, we've been playing this thing over and over too, but, you know, now this thing has been cut in half, right? And so how much lower can it go? Of course, I mean, it, it ran up from $25. There's a lot that, of course, it can give back a lot of gains. But look at the verticality of this, right? You know, you're starting to really get some extension on these things. You know, so that tells me that, you know, to keep shorting these things, yeah, we can get some sh quick trades out and we might rip a dollar here, a dollar there. But, right, the easy money has is over. You know, now we've got to kind of look and see what plays out. So, you know, those are my thoughts on the market right now. Uh, we're not seeing too much else, you know. The Chinese markets and the Brazilian markets seem to be the strongest, especially Brazil. Um, I've got a couple of Brazil stocks on my watch list. But otherwise, you know, we're not really seeing anything, right? Silver stinks. 
gold stinks oil right you know oil's been strong and oil and gas stocks are really the the the, the leaders right now but those are kind of the crappiest stocks to trade uh, in my personal opinion uh, they make for easy swing trades and that type of thing but they stink for day trading and so I typically stay away from them but you know so oil is strong Brazil is strong so you know look watch these key you know key ones if you're gonna go long you're better off you know sticking in um, some sectors that are actually holding up and you know what if the market does start to reverse then you know we'll have a whole list of stocks that you can play um, you know, really all these ones that have been probably uh, nailed the most are going to get the first snapbacks. And then from that, the bounce, you'll start to see where the leaders are. But this is what I mean. Like, you know, Athlon Energy, right, is an oil and gas stock. This is not a real tradable stock if you're looking on an intraday basis. I mean, look at the way its candles are and stuff. Uh, that's not a tradable stock, right? And so it's like even though it's strong, uh, that's probably not something I'd play. Uh, GFA, this is a Brazilian home builder. I used to play this stock all the time back in the day. This is one of my first stocks in my IRA. Uh, it's coming out of range here. You know, it's really been stuck in a range for a long time. This 350 level seems to be a pretty important level. So I'd keep an eye on something like this. You know, this thing could get going. Take that off. But, you know, like CP, this is, a, you know, another stock, right, that we kind of got a, like a triple tap breakout on. But it's going to need a little bit of work. You know, it's not an easy day trader. It's probably something that's more of a swing trader. Uh, Con has been holding up really well here. You know, it's got its 50-day moving average on top. But I'm interested in this one a little bit because, you know, after it had its initial earning spike, it's just been hanging out here. Um, I think this one has uh, more highs in it. Um, Sohu, you know, if the market does start to flush, you know, this is the type of stock that, you know, it still has a lot more downside in it. You know, if you're looking at it, right, it's it's a pretty big breakdown. But, you know, my worry on this is, you know, after such an extension, uh, we need some time to really have this thing chill out before you're really going to get the flush, unless the market is just straight up crashing. Cree, same type of thing, right? And, you know, if you're looking at this level, you know, we've been just testing it nonstop since 2013. Um, if we break below this, then, you know, we're going to get some more downside action on this thing. VIP, same type of thing. All these big momentum stocks have flushed below its 50-day moving average, and this one has held up. So, you know, this one might be something that we could play to the long side, and if the market's getting whacked, you know, we'll be able to short this bad boy too. Same thing with Kihu, right? You know, you've got your 200-day moving average holding up. If the market starts to bounce, we'll have an easy way to manage our risk, and if not, we can short this breakdown. Uh, Rax, this 31 level is... Uh, is fairly important. You can see this is a big breakdown coming back from 2011. So once again, right, if we get a pause in the market or something like that, this could be, and then a, a rip lower, this is going to be a good play. Um, you know, it looks like it could be ready even now. It's not really a big range play in terms of its daily movement, but something to keep an eye on. You know, it might be a decent swing short. Take that off the list. Man, take that off the list. Take that off the list. Twitter, this is another one, you know. This one is really the one that kind of led the tech stocks to the downside. You know, we've got our IPO lows here. You know, ideally what i like to see is really a rip below those IPO lows. And then if the market starts to bounce, you know, add a few shares uh, and then put the stop under the new low. But we want to kind of wash this thing out. SC2I, right, another stock that's really at a key bounce place. You know, you might break down below this level and maybe get down to 50. If not, you've got an easy way to kind of define your risk. You know, long term, the stock's just been heavily distributed, but something to keep an eye on. Uh, Moby, I do like this one for a long. You know, the selling has been fairly weak on this bad boy. You know, if it can hold here and we start getting a rip on the markets, you know, this one could be a stock that starts bouncing. You might get nine, ten bucks out of this thing. And then right, JKS, if it breaks under that 200-day moving average, you know, you've got kind of a nice range breakdown too. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, I, I'd wait to see if the market can relax for a bit before I try to kind of short this one as it just popped down five bucks. But once again, if the market's crashing, it might not mean anything. So uh, that's it for now, guys. Remember, <clears throat> the price action's nasty. You've got to be defensive. Less is more.
but also remember to open your eyes to all the different levels of support that may come in the market. This market has set a lot of bear traps in the past, and uh, frankly, this could be one of them. We don't know, but right, we have to be open to the possibility because we've seen it numerous times. It's always when the market looks the worst, right, that you get the huge, huge rips to the upside, and then we break out to new highs. So uh, that's it for now, guys. If you're new, you might want to just chill. This is a good time to make watch lists and hang out for a little bit, you know, learn from people as uh, it's a tricky one. You know, it's a tricky one that even has uh, gotten me making some uh, mental errors that, you know, uh, cost us money. So uh, that's it for now, guys. I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care.